Tommy Patera was a cold, homicidal maniac. A lot of mobsters don't really have the stomach to do the things Tommy did. Tommy killed them and dismembered the body. I think he took it the extra step because he enjoyed it. Had he not been an organized crime, he would have been a serial killer. Tommy Patero grew up just blocks from a 17th century Dutch cemetery that gave his Brooklyn neighborhood its name, Gravesend. Tommy made a name for himself by roughing up deadbeats who owed drug money. He had the martial arts skills, so nobody was really going to intimidate him in a fight situation. The martial arts he used earned him the mob nickname, Tommy Karate. Tommy got friendly with a Bonanno family mobster named Anthony Bruno in Delicato. Bruno was a big heroin trafficker. Tommy hooked up with him, and he became Bruno's protege. Bruno was also the family's go-to guy for contract murder. His resume included so many hits that he was called Whack Whack. Tommy learned the art of murder from Bruno. According to Whack Whack, the best way to get rid of a body was to cut it up and stuff it into suitcases. In the late 70s, heroin and cocaine were the family's big money makers. New York Mafia bosses had long opposed drug trafficking, but the Bananos were the exception. Patero was a good fit for the operation. That's a tough business. People kill over an ounce of coke. You need somebody who's tough. He was a tough guy. At 24 years old, the tough guy felt he was ready for some career advancement. He wanted to make the jump from mob associate to made man. Through Bruno and Delicato, Patero was introduced to a high-ranking mobster named Anthony Sparrow. Anthony Sparrow was one of the major captains in the Bonanno crime family. He was a well-known guy, well-respected and quite feared. Sparrow saw a lot of promise in the young mobster. Patera could be another go-to guy for murder. With Sparrow's blessing, Tommy was nominated for the mob's highest honor, to become a made man. He was an earner uh, through the drugs that he sold, but even more importantly, he was an executioner. When it came to his customers with Tommy, either you paid or you died. He knew that narcotics could also draw heat from law enforcement. Tommy worked hard to keep his tracks covered, but Tommy's biggest fear wasn't those on the outside. It was those inside his own crew who might talk to the feds and rat him out. Tommy was careful, even obsessive, about who he'd work with or even talk to. And for Tommy Patera, business was booming. His headquarters was in his bar, the Just Us Lounge. It was his way of saying mobsters only. By 1987 on the streets of Brooklyn, the 33-year-old drug dealer had developed a terrifying reputation. Patera's methods were extreme, but his kilt stayed within mafia rules. Deadbeats and rats wound up dead. He became very morose. The guys around him said, you know, it's, he's scary, but he's scarier now. As part of Tommy's crew, Frank Angie had seen more than he ever wanted to see. He wasn't cut out for it. I was shocked. It was nuts. <laughs> it was crazy. Tommy had killed some people and, and done it in some very gruesome ways in which Frank was involved. Even the mobsters, even the executioners, they have their limits as to what they're going to do. And Frank Angie had his limits. April 10th, 1990. Frank Angie was partying. He got behind the wheel of his car and started weaving down a Brooklyn street. Cops arrested him and tossed him in a jail cell to sober up. He started thinking about some of the things he did with Patera. He got a case of the conscience. I said, listen, I, I gotta talk to you. I don't know what made me do it. The detective listened to Ganji then called the feds. We went over, we spoke to Ganji. He agreed to cooperate, and he told the story of Patera, as he knew it, his years with Patera. They debriefed me, and I believed everything I said. Frank Ganji, turn the page for us, you know? Now you have a guy who's done murders with Tommy and talking about it to you. 
June 3, 1990, on the streets of Brooklyn, DEA agents Tommy Geisel and Jim Hunt weaved through morning traffic. Just ahead was their target, the elusive Tommy Karate Patera. Hunt and I pulled him out of his car and put him on the ground, handcuffed him, and, and it was done very, very, very quickly. Patera was finally off the street. With the evidence in Ganji's testimony, Patera was charged with seven murders and a slew of drug offenses. May 6, 1992, at Brooklyn's federal courthouse, the trial of Tommy Patera got underway. The star witness was Frank Ganji. Worst feeling I ever had. So I became a rat. I was ratting somebody out. Ganji started crying. During the break in the, in the proceeding, uh, Patera was sitting there and he said, you happy now you cry, baby? Ganji's testimony delivered a heavy blow, linking Patera to multiple murders and corroborating physical evidence. Patera never took the stand. He really couldn't take the stand because of all of this organized crime stuff. Tommy would rather die than to answer questions that could hurt any of his friends. June 25, 1992. The jury returned with a verdict. Tommy Patera was found guilty on six counts of murder. The jury rejected the death penalty and sentenced him to life in prison. Today, Patera lives in the Federal Correctional Institute in Allenwood, Pennsylvania. He claims he's still locked up because he refuses to rat out his mob allies.